These platforms are going to disrupt the traditional world order in a way like we have never seen before. We were not around in the early 1900s when telephone electricity and the automobile disrupted the existing world order. These are five platforms and they involve 14 different technologies. We want people to understand how their lives are going to change and how their children's grandchildren's lives are going to change and how important it is for all of us to get on the right side of change. In a world dominated by men, Kathy Wood became the symbol for a new generation of investors. They challenged the establishment by forging their own path. Driven by relentless passion, Kathy Wood turned a middle-class upbringing into her own empire. For the past three years, many of her predictions have come true or are coming true. But her strategy is still volatile and the market remains to be unforgiving. Truly disruptive innovation, which is all we focus on, is priced at roughly $8 trillion in value in the markets today. That number, we believe, is going to more than $200 trillion during the next 8 to 10 years. So it's going from less than 10% of the global public equity market to what we believe will be 60%. And the reason we believe that it will move to that level is because these platforms are going to disrupt the traditional world order in a way like we have never seen before. We were not around in the early 1900s when telephone electricity and the automobile disrupted the existing world order. These are five platforms, not three, and they involve 14 different technologies. So we do extensive research. I think we do the best research, if I might say, uh, because of our sole focus on it. And we give that research away because we want people to understand how their lives are going to change and how their children's grandchildren's lives are going to change and how how important it is for all of us to get on the right side of change. The impact of innovation on inflation. We are seeing artificial intelligence training costs dropping 60% per year. And we're seeing mind-blowing breakthroughs in artificial intelligence. So that's a huge deflationary undercurrent. And AI is going to become a part of every industry every company. Those who harness it the most intelligently and strategically are going to be the winners. And then, you know, with Wright's Law, which says for every cumulative doubling in the number of units produced, prices associated with each technology decline at a consistent rate. In the industrial robotic space, that rate is 51%. In the battery space, it's 28%. In the DNA sequencing space, it's 28% for short read, and 40% for long read. So we're seeing deflationary forces that are beginning to matter. You know, electric vehicles now, it depends where you are, in China they account for nine, battery electric vehicles, not even including hybrid, account for 19% of all sales. In Europe it's 10%, in the US it's closer to 5%. So these are beginning to move the needle now. And I think we'll be shocked at how low inflation goes and how long it it stays there. Now this is good deflation. Falling prices associated with new technologies causes booms in unit growth. We're seeing that in electric vehicles now. Even though the economy is so weak, they're better, faster, cheaper, more efficient, less of a gas guzzler. Technology is going to permeate every sector and will transmit some deflationary undercurrents that I think are going to be quite surprising. And I think that the kind of bull market that is going to come out of this is one that investors dreamed of in the late 90s. They dreamed of it and they acted on it and that ended badly. Today, because of what happened back then, they're running for the hills, they're running for their benchmarks. And that, I think, will end badly as well. I'll start with Zoom. It's a fascinating stock. Many people call it a stay-at-home stock because, of course, it did so much to help us transition through COVID. So to give you a sense of the drama here, Zoom's revenues are up sevenfold since 2019, before the COVID. So it was roughly $600 million in revenue, and now we're up to $4.4 billion, we think, for this fiscal year. Its cash flow has gone from roughly $40 million 
dollars. So even back then it had cash flow to $1.6 billion. And yet the stock and its earnings per share have gone from nine cents to $3 and roughly 70 cents we think for this year. And yet the stock is below where it was before COVID. It's astonishing to us. This is what I mean by a deep value stock in our portfolios. This is not just a consumer stock. In fact, more than half of its revenues is enterprise. And that number is increasing dramatically. Why? This is the first rip and replace cycle in the enterprise communication space since Cisco built out the backbone of the internet in wow. the early 90s. First rip and replace cycle. This cycle is going into the cloud. We're not going to be as hardware yeah. centric or on-prem. It's going into the cloud. And this market is Zoom's and Microsoft's to win. We are very positive in Bitcoin. We have Big Ideas 2022, which you can find on our website. We have a price target in 2030 of $1.3 million. It's only 21,000 now. And we can show you the building blocks, how we get there. I find that very interesting. When you think about it, it's uh, simply uh, a call. Well, it's a, they're, they're shorting innovation. And that seems to me over time, that's not going to be a business. If you ask me, consider the source, but they're also not doing any research. They're simply shorting innovation. If they were doing research and could point us to reasons why what we have included in our portfolio is not going to participate in the new world order, uh, then we might have a conversation about it, but the idea of shorting innovation in America is ridiculous, I think. But here's what I do know. This is investor psychology. When I see people so sure that we are wrong, they are willing to set up companies simply to short innovation and to set up funds to short innovation. You know that investor psychology, the pendulum, has swung so far in one direction that if we're right, then the rewards are going to be enormous.